OK, so what we've seen uh, with the standard deviation is that we have a formula. Um, so for the standard deviation, the sum of x minus x bar squared uh, divided by n square rooted. And if you're going to use that formula, it is quite cumbersome. And so really what we want to do is we want to find a nicer way of being able to calculate, a quicker way of being able to calculate SXX without me having to subtract the mean from each of the data items, then square each of those items, then add them all together. Okay, I want a neater way of doing getting that SXX. And I'm going to show you how we can get an alternative formula for it in this video. This is an extension, okay, so you don't need to replicate where this comes from. But in your formula booklet and your notes, you will see that there is an alternative formula for the standard deviation, which you know, need to know how to use. Okay, So this is where it comes from. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start off with the SXX uh, formula as it stands for summation of x minus x bar all squared. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, expand those brackets. So. I'm going to expand those brackets so I get the summation of x squared take away two lots of x bar the mean times each of the x's plus the mean squared. Okay, So what I've got is the summation of all of that. Now what I can then do with summations is I can effectively... Uh, expand the summations out. Okay, so this is the same as adding up all of the x squareds, then taking away the sum of all of the two x bar x's plus the summation of the x bar squareds. Okay, now the thing is that the x bar and the x bar squared for that matter, and the 2, these are just numbers, okay? They are fixed numbers. So um, what I can do is I can factor out those numbers. So I can factor the 2 at x bar out of the summation, and I can also factor the x bar squared out of this summation. So let's do that. Now I can't factor the x squared out because the x squared isn't fixed. In fact, this is xi squared. So it's all the individual x's being squared and then adding together. Okay, So I can't factor that out. It's not one number. So that's got to stay as it is. Here, the 2x bar can come outside, because that's just a number. And I get left with a summation of x. Plus, well, I can pull the x bar squared out because that's just a number, and I get left with the summation of, well, 1. Okay. So this is where I'm currently at. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at um, what this summation of x actually is and what this summation of 1 actually is. I can't do anything with the summation of x squared. That's got to stay as it is. Okay. So let's have a think about this guy here, that summation of x. Well, I know that x bar, the mean, is the sum of the x's divided by n. So that means that the summation of x, if I multiply up by the n, is the same as n times x bar. OK, so what I can do is I can replace the summation of x with n x bar. So I'm going to have take away two lots of x bar times n x bar plus I've got the x bar squared. Now, what's the summation of 1? Now, I'm going to have n bits of data, and I'm adding it up ones n times. So if there's three bits of data, then I've got 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3. If I've got five bits of data, then it's 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 5. 
So if I've got, if I've got n bits of data, the summation of all the ones will add up to n. So let's tidy up what I've got now. I've got the summation of the x squared. I've got take away two lots of x, well, let's do it as 2n, rather. 2n times x bar squared plus n lots of x bar squared. Now, because I've got take away two lots of n x bar squared and n x bar squared, then I can combine those two terms, because they're like terms, and I'll just get left with take away one lot of n x bar squared. So we now have a new formula for SXX. Okay? So this is an alternative formula for SXX, which is easier to work with because the summation of x squared is easier to find. And then I can just take away n, however many data points there are, times the mean squared. So what does that do to the formula for sigma x? Well, sigma x, we know, is the sum of x minus x bar squared, which we now can write like that. Divided by n square rooted. But I can rewrite that as the sum of x squared over n, so splitting the fraction apart, and then I can cancel those n's there to leave me with just take away the mean squared. And so I now have a new version of the formula for sigma x, okay? The standard deviation of a single set of data. If I'm looking at the sample standard deviation, or the standard deviation as it's referred to by MEI, uh, OCR MEI, then what I instead have is SX is equal to the SXX formula, which was this guy, divided by n minus 1 square rooted. Okay? So that is how we can find the standard, uh, the sample standard deviation. Now that really, it won't uh, simplify that nicely. I mean, you could write it as two independent fractions, that bit. Take away that bit, okay? But it's not as nice looking. Um, sometimes it's rewritten, um, uh, the, sigma, the uh, x bar, can be written as sigma x over n, and that gets included in the formula. Um, but as long as you remember that what you're doing for the sample standard deviation is divided by n minus 1, then that's fine. So um, the exam boards, uh, AQA, OCR, Edexcel, will give you this alternative formula here. And we're going to see how we're going to use it in the next video. Um, for MEI, uh, they give you the alternative formula here for SXX um, and then explains that standard deviation is uh, 1 over n minus 1 times that. Um, that's for the variance, sorry. Uh, for the standard deviation, you also have to square root that times 1 over n minus 1. Okay, so it's all... It's all uh, it's all a little bit fiddly, okay, uh, jumping between the boards, but just so long as you know exactly what's given to you in the formula booklet.